Hi, I'm Adobe Developer Evangelist Kevin Hoyt. Today I'd like to talk to you about the HTML5 Canvas tag. So now the Canvas tag in HTML5 that's already available in many browsers allows you to do dynamic drawing on the client. Um, and this might be lines, shapes, images, and much, much more. So today I'd like to talk to you about how to get started with the HTML5 Canvas. So I have a page here already available for me to use in Dreamweaver. Now this is just a basic HTML page with nothing on it so far. And we're going to go ahead and add the Canvas tag and show you how to get it started. So the first thing to do for Canvas tag support is obviously to have a Canvas. So the, the Canvas tag looks like this, as you might expect. We'll go ahead and create a new Canvas tag. And we'll give it an ID. And the reason we want to give it an ID is because we want to refer to it later in our code. I'm just going to call it canvas, and then we're going to give it a width. So the width of our drawing area, the area that we're going to be able to draw on, and then the height, and then we'll close the tag. Now, the question might become, what if you have a browser that doesn't support canvas? Well, in this case, you want to present alternative content, and you can put anything inside the canvas tag that you want. Um, in this case, we're going to be drawing a rectangle. So I've already kind of prefabbed a drawing of a rectangle in Fireworks and uh, exported that as a PNG. I'm going to go ahead and put that image in here. And so the user will see uh, that image in its place. Let's go ahead and start image source. And looks like switch to the right directory here. Images, rectangle. And you can see here that it's just a uh, just a simple black rectangle that fills uh, space. And then we'll go ahead and specify the width and the height on this other content. Now you can put as much other content in here as you want. The, uh, it can be other complete DOM elements. It can be just an image. It could be um, additional script. It could be just text. It could be anything you want you could put in there. And that's what's going to render if the canvas is not supported in that particular browser. So now that I have a replacement for what's going to be dis displayed and I have a canvas in place, the question is how do I use it? How do I take advantage of that drawing capability? Well, canvas uh, and most of its drawing capability is uh, manifested to you as the developer via JavaScript. So I'll be using jQuery in my examples for using canvas. and I already have that script available to me in this page. I'll go ahead and create a new script block here. And inside of that script block, we're going to go ahead and let us know when the document is ready. So a little jQuery hook here for when the document is ready. And now that the document is uh, notified us that it's ready for us to interact with, we're going to need a couple different variables. The first one I'm going to get is a reference to the canvas element. And that's the actual DOM element that we just created on our page. So I'm going to do that by saying canvas equals document and get element by ID. Canvas. That, that ID, again, being the ID that we gave to our canvas tag when we put it inside the HTML body. The other variable I'm going to need here in a minute, and I'll explain more about this uh, uh, as we go along, but is, is a context variable. And the context is going to let us actually do the drawing and, and such as we move forward. Uh, for now, I'm going to set that to null. Now, as I come down further, I want to say, hey, if canvas, so this is the DOM element that we just extracted from the page or referenced from the page, uh, if get context, then go ahead and do one thing. Otherwise, do something else. You can say, well, get context. Let's get context. Get context is actually a method on the canvas DOM element. And what it does is it gets the context for you to be drawing um, whatever it is you're going to draw. The uh, reason we're going to do this check is we're going to essentially see if Canvas is supported in this browser. So we already have default content to display if it's not, but we also don't want to execute script if Canvas is not supported in this particular browser. So we want to go ahead and check for its existence. And if we say, hey, get a DOM element, and if that DOM element that we think is a Canvas has this get context method on it, then it's a Canvas, and it supports everything we need to do to be able to draw. So we're going to check and see if it's available. If it's not, we might want to alert the user, make, maybe execute some other JavaScript functionality to uh, put alternative content, may, maybe make a, an XHR request or what have you. Uh, just for test purposes, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just use an alert and say canvas not supported. Now, in the first part of that if statement, if canvas is supported, we want to go ahead and do something. 
Well, we need this, we need to be able to draw. So at this point, we've got access to the canvas, but the canvas itself is just a DOM element with a few extra methods. To actually do the drawing, we're going to get the context of that drawing surface. So now that we know that this uh, this implementation supports Canvas, we'll say context equals canvas .get context, and then we need to specify what type of context. The way the specification is written, it actually anticipates that there'll be different ways to draw. For example, in this case, we'll use a 2D drawing surface, but in the future there might be 3D or other types of drawing surfaces that you can use. So we use a git context for 2D, and that gives us a context uh, object from the canvas that allows us to uh, do all the drawing. It has all the drawing methods on it. And so in this case, let's go ahead and draw something. Um, let's say context fill rectangle. And uh, in the fill rectangle method, uh, we'll talk more about drawing shapes and, and lines in future episodes. But in this particular case, the fill, rec fill rect method is going to take a couple different parameters. The first one is where to start, x and y, so over how many pixels, down how many pixels in the context of that canvas space. So I'm going to say over 10, down 10. And then it's going to take the width and the height. Now keep in mind, this is width and height, not where, uh, where that other corner should be. It's actually the width and the height. So in this case, I'm going to fill my 200 pixels by 200 pixels with enough space to have a 10 pixel margin on either side. So I'll say over 180, down 180. And that does the basic drawing. So in this case, uh, to see this, we might launch over to a browser. But Dreamweaver CS5 actually has a really cool feature. It has a captive WebKit built into it. And so I can come up here and actually go a split view. And I can see the in the split view the canvas being rendered or at least uh, where it will be in the page. Now the next thing I want to do is come over here to my Dreamweaver CS5 menu bar and click on the Live View option. So Live View will actually activate that WebKit inside of the viewable space, and then all the uh, JavaScript and CSS and other things that might be rendered in the process of putting that together will show up. And so here we can actually see, once we've turned on the Live View, a rectangle that is, in this case, uh, 180 pixels wide by 180 pixels tall, and rendered on the canvas dynamically. And that's all it takes to get started. Now there's a lot more to come. At this point you can do things like drawing lines, and working with images, and taking apart images, and really the doors open up for you to do all kinds of dynamic drawing content on the client. We'll do that in future episodes, and until then, I'm Kevin Hoyt.